Today, on Be Something Wonderful, persist in the conviction of what you desire. It's not what you think. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. Big video this morning, and this comes on the heels of yesterday's video, which there were a lot of questions in sessions yesterday that I had with clients about this video. Good questions, powerful questions, big movement. And there was also a comment from the very subscriber who posed that powerful question on the channel. And I wanna go over all of this today and more. Here's some of the questions that came up. What if you know, in other words, what if you have the conviction it's your destiny, but still have doubts it will happen or can happen? Interesting. You're convinced that it's your destiny, but you're not sure if you're going to be able to, to, to meet your destiny, to fulfill it, right? Unfulfilled destiny. Where does persisting in processes fit in then? Because we talked about the idea that it's all about conviction. Well, we're going to talk about that today and more. If linear time doesn't matter, why did it take six years? And I even heard one of you sort of um, confirming one of your limiting beliefs saying, yeah, you know, it, it, it's not talked about, but some desires just take years. Remember, that's what you believe. And so that's going to be your assumptions. That's all the evidence. Whenever you look out there, because there's no out there out there, you're only going to see instances, examples, evidence of manifestations and demonstrations that take time because that's all you can see. That's all you can assume. Do you hear it? It's, it's about persisting in the love of what you want versus the lack of what you want. So it's not, a, remember, you are the process. So it's not about dumping on processes or saying that processes don't work. It's none of that. They all fit in, but you are the process. God is the process. And what is the process? What is persisting? It's persisting in the love of what you want versus the lack. We're going to cover this today. It's beyond belief and doubt, right? It goes beyond belief. When, when you're in that desire of what you love. We're going to talk about this. And it didn't take time. That's just a story. You're saying it took six years. That's just a story. That's a story that she was telling. That's a story you're telling. That's a story even the subscriber was telling. That's just a story. It happened now in the only time it can happen. When everything was lined up. When she was in that conviction. So it's not that some desires take years. That's just a bogus belief. And you're only going to see that. That's the only reality that you're going to see. So let's cover this like we never have before. So in the video yesterday, it was called, She Manifested Him Without Processes Despite Impossible Conditions. I'm going to leave a link in the description so you can go to that video. So this is what the subscriber said. The subscriber that posed that powerful question. She said, I forgot to specify that it was not only me who thought that it was impossible, but she too. Hear it. Now she's saying, it's not only me that thought it was impossible. She too. Because all her life she said, I'm unlucky. I only attract worries. I have a difficult life. But she was convinced that despite everything, he was her destiny, a gift from God. So hear this. right? Yes, sure, she doubted it. She doubted her destiny. She, she thought there might, that some things looked impossible. But what was more powerful than that doubt? What was more powerful than that belief that some things could be impossible? Her, her love of her desire. Do you hear it? Her love of her desire was much more powerful. Her belief that it was her destiny, that it was a gift from God. Right? The, the conviction and love of what she wanted, persisting in that, goes beyond belief directly to your source and knowing as source in God that all things, all that is, is yours as reality. Thinking as reality, it went beyond mere belief. Right? And it doesn't matter if you're believing in God, if you're believing as God, as Neville God, it makes a distinction. Whether you believe that, 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 you're, that God is, is the supreme power and that you are that you are subordinate to that power, but you are part of that power, whatever your beliefs are, just as she was saying that, that it was a gift from God, you are apt to, that power works through you and as you, whether you believe it or not. So we're going to cover this today. So this is powerful. I just want you to hear this. And this whole idea of six years, that's just a story, story you're telling and you're repeating, right? So, so she might have thought, that it was impossible, but the, the pure love of her desire, the pure conviction that it was her destiny, 
moved her, aligned her heart and mind with what she wanted. And it manifested in her life. That's powerful, right? So persisting in your wish fulfilled is about persisting in the love of what you desire, not the lack of it. Because some of them were saying, well, I've been persisting, but nothing's happened. What, but what are you persisting in? Lack or love? Love is infinitely more powerful than lack. Persisting in your wish fulfilled is a decision from within of wanting only fulfillment and nothing else, right? She wanted only fulfillment and nothing else. She wanted that destiny and nothing else. It was a decision from within. So she might have had some beliefs of it being impossible. Sure. She might have had some doubts, but that power, that love for what she wanted is infinitely more powerful. Right? To see the world through the assumption and lens of fulfillment. When you want only love, you will see nothing else. This is what, this is what A Course in Miracles says. She was persisting in, in her wish fulfilled as a decision from within of wanting only fulfillment and nothing else. When you want only love, you will see nothing else. A Course in Miracles. To see the world through the assumption and lens of fulfillment. That's what she was seeing it through, despite the doubt. Right? And... and the conviction of what you love is infinitely more powerful than the belief in what you lack. Do you hear it? So you might even have a belief that lack is possible, that, it, that it's possible not to, to move to your destiny, but it's that conviction that she had, that absolute conviction of what you love is infinitely more powerful. This is really what Abraham Hicks talks about. I've talked about this in many videos now. If your desire is strong enough, it doesn't matter what your beliefs are. Do you hear it? If your desire is strong enough, meaning if your love for what you want, that love for that destiny is what is strong enough, it doesn't matter what your beliefs are or lack of what you want, your belief in lack of what you want, right? If, it, if the belief in what you desire is stronger than the belief in the lack of what, what you want, then of course you're going to move to it. This is what Net Neil Donald Walsh in um, Conversations with God calls the sponsoring thought or assumption. Your sponsoring thought or assumption or belief creates reality in your entire life experience. Neil Donald Walsh, Conversations with God. Your, your sponsoring thought, what is your, where, is your, where is your dominant belief? Or as Abraham Hicks, in Abraham Hicks uh, vocabulary, vibration. But what's your dominant assumption? What's your dominant conviction? Right? Because your dominant belief is your conviction. Where that is. Right? Abraham Hicks, if your desire is strong enough, it, that, it, that desire will be the dominant vibration and override any other vibration, any other vibration that you have. So Abraham Hicks talks in vibration. We talk about what you're conscious of being, but it's really the, there's not much difference there, right? Who are you conscious of being? Are you conscious of being that person that that in that destiny, that that destiny is fulfilled for you. Because that's what's going on. If your desire, if your love of what you want, in other words, if your conviction, the love of what you want is strong enough, it doesn't matter what you believe, right? The dominant vibration is that and overrides all other beliefs, all other vibrations. That's powerful. So this subscriber, she, this BSW subscriber, when she said, but she was convinced that despite everything, wow, Hear the statement. She was convinced that despite everything, in other words, every other belief, condition, or doubt or fear, despite all that other doubt, despite all those other conditions that looked impossible, the distance between them, the difference in cultures, the difference in age, all of that, he was, he, he was her destiny, a gift from God. That's what she said, right? He was her destiny, a gift from God, right? Sponsoring thought, assumption, conviction, or vibration is that belief. The, uh, and this is what Neil Donald Walsh says, Conversations with God, the only, the only sponsoring thought which could override a belief in lack <laughs> the thought is the thought held in faith, the conviction that God will grant whatever is asked without fail. That's what she believed, right? That God, it's a gift from God. She believed in this power. Whether she believed it's a power outside of herself or she's one with it doesn't matter. She believed it. And she believed in it, in that destiny. Do you hear it? That's why it was her destiny. It was a gift from God. The love of what her desire, as Abraham Hicks would say. Right? She was convinced that despite everything, despite every other belief, every other doubt, every other fear, every other out of condition, inner condition, every other thought, every other feeling, he was her destiny, a gift from God. Sponsoring thought, assumption, conviction, or dominant vibration in Abraham Hicks' terms. Or sponsoring thought in Neil Donald Walsh terms. 
right? The over the sputtering thought, which will override this thought. Remember what um, what uh, Abraham Hicks said here: the dominant vibration overrides any other vibration. Neil Donald Walsh: the only sponsoring thought which can override this thought of lack is the thought held in faith, the conviction that God will grant whatever is asked without fear. Neil Donald Walsh: conversation with God. God talking through Neil Donald Walsh, right? Her inner talking. Her inner speech, her story was that it's done, it's mine, the wish fulfilled. In, ne- in Neville Goddard terms, right? It's done, her inner speech. Her inner story was it's my destiny. Her dominant vibration was it's my destiny. Her sponsoring thought that it's my destiny. It's a conviction. Do you hear it? That becomes a sponsoring thought. I don't care what spiritual teaching you're talking about, it all lines up, right? That inner talking, it's mine, your wish is fulfilled, perfectly matched her fulfilled desire. Wow, her story. Right? That's why Neville Goddard said, as we control our inner talking, inner authority, our conviction, matching it to our fulfilled desires, we can lay aside all of our processes. Well, that's what she did. She is the process. <laughs> she knew it, right? Phenomena of life, I am, is the conviction. Right? So one of you asked me, well, well, Tom, if spiritual teachers are always talking about why do we, if conviction is the is the only uh, thing you need. Then why do spiritual teachers talk about feeling loved and feeling love and feeling and feeling and, and creating and conjuring up feelings of self-love and conjuring up feelings that your SP loves you? Why? Well, because guys, love is I am. I am is conviction. So it's all the same. Self-love, love, I am, conviction. You can lay aside all other beliefs. That's what Neville Goddard said, right? Hold on to nothing. That's what A Course in Miracles says, right? Persisting in your wish fulfilled is about persisting in the love of what you desire, not trying and efforting to hold on the thought and feeling of your wish or desire. Do you hear it? Because we try to hold on to that state of fulfillment or whatever that means in 3D, right? Our Our changing 3D feelings and emotions. Right? Persisting, though, is it in your wish fulfilled? It's about persisting in the love of what you desire, in the conviction of what you desire, in the I am of what you desire, right? In, in holding on to nothing else, not trying and efforting to hold on to the thought and feeling of your wish and desire. Instead, just be in the conviction. It's about letting go of non fulfillment and what you don't want. That's all. Just let go of non fulfillment. Unbind him and let him loose as Jesus commanded. When, he, when, when uh, Lazarus was raised from the dead, right? It's, a, it's, it's not about solving or getting rid of non-fulfillment. That only keeps, it, that only keeps your attention to focus on it. We, we're always focusing on, I've got to stay in that which fulfilled so I can get rid of non-fulfillment. I've got to, I've got to get rid of non-fulfillment. I've got to solve the problem of non-fulfillment by trying to stay, trying to conjure positive thoughts, trying to th- feel feel good feelings, try to feel good thoughts. I've got to do that to solve the problem of non-fulfillment or to get to rid of non-fulfillment. Just don't hold on to non-fulfillment. Hold on to the conviction, right? Hold on to nothing, right? So, with, and this is what Vadim Zeeland, reality, tra- we're hitting them all today, guys, reality transurfing. With outer intention, what he means by outer intention is that God power within you, that great subconscious that works through you and as you. It is not so much a matter of believing as knowing. Vadim Zeeland now is going to the knowing, the conviction. What your heart says is true for you. It's the inner authority. It's the conviction we talk about. This is what Vadim Zeeland says. The heart does not reason. It just knows. It knows. Right? Give yourself, he says, give yourself the permission to have. Everyone is free to choose whatever they desire. We just don't believe it. So stop trying to believe it and go to the knowing. Go to the conviction. Go to the love of what you desire. Right? That, that, will, that, that overcomes any of those thoughts of lack or disbelief. Persisting in your wish fulfilled is not about waiting for it or trying to make it happen. Rather, it's about allowing it to exist and have its being in consciousness. Allow it to exist. Allow it to have its being in consciousness. Let go of those ideas of non-fulfillment. Right? Wow, that's powerful. Her imaginal scene, because some of you in yesterday's sessions that I had were asking about, well, well, what about imagining then? What about imaginal scenes and all that shit? But remember, her imaginal scene, she had a scene, right? Her imaginal scene or slide, as, as Vadim Zeeland calls it, a slide, that you keep rolling the slide, as we talked about the lifelines and the scripts and the individual slides of reality 
and, and that you want to light up your future, you want to light up that future frame or slide, was her slide or frame or of what she wanted was natural to her. It was her destiny. It's my destiny. Do you see it? It was natural. She allowed it to be. She allowed it to have that place in consciousness, right? She allowed it. She didn't try to make it happen. She allowed it to exist in her beingness. The dream slide, as, the, as, as Vadim Zeeland calls it a dream slide, was in her awareness constantly as a conviction. Do you see it? It was in her awareness constantly. She was imagining it. It was there. Well, she, she didn't have to think of it all the time. It was, she was thinking from it. She was, being, she was living it as it, right? C create the dream slide. This is what Vadim Zeeland says. Create the dream slide in your mind and hold it in your awareness constantly. But it doesn't mean thinking of it constantly. It means that's your destiny. That's your awareness of your destiny. It's me. It's natural to me. You, you can think, he says here, you can think about other things, but the picture should always be there in the background, and it always is when you think of it from conviction, right? Persisting is not thinking of, right? Remember, from and of what Neville Goddard talks about, your desire or what you want. That creates a reality of wanting but never having and never being. It's a choice. It's a choice to be it. It's a choice to have it. It's giving yourself the permission to have it, to be it. It's giving yourself permission to live your destiny, right? Giving yourself permission with gratitude to have the kingdom. Thinking from fulfillment in your conviction of I am that. That's what we mean about persisting in the conviction of what you desire. It's not what you thought. It's not what you think. I am your host, Tom Karen. And this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Uh, we have a Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors, at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful, where you can join that and, and share insight and guidance with others and ask for insight and guidance. We have an Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen. Or just go to our website anytime at tomcaron.com or be something wonderful.com. We also have additional content, powerful content on the membership channel. There's a link below if you want to join that channel. Guys, with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude, creators, this is Tom Karen with Be Something Wonderful. We'll see you soon.